generating topographic map with contours using the Rock Surveyor app on the Rock Cloud. Let's go. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Rock Surveyor app on the Rock Cloud to generate a topographic map with contours, digital train model, and a bare earth classified LiDAR data set and a ground control point report. It's going to look just like this data set here behind me. This is actually what we're going to try replicating in this video. Here we see the results. We actually have all the contour lines at one foot intervals. This LiDAR data set is in a state plane of the California Zone 6, NAD 83211, and it's using a vertical datum projection of NAV D88 in US survey feet. The red points are ground control points, and the data you're looking at right now is the ground classified LiDAR data set. So how do we make this ourselves? That's the topic of today's video. To get started, this is what I used to make this topographic map. I had an aerial LiDAR data set, an LAS, and it had ground control points. I knew what my projection was that I had my data in, and I knew the projection where I wanted to go to. Everything else was all used on the Rock Cloud and using the Rock Survey app to generate these deliverables. Let's just go ahead and just walk through step by step how I did that. The first step is to create a new project. This project was near San Diego. We'll go ahead and create the project right here. And we will call this the Rock Surveyor Demo and leave the description blank for now. We can come back to that later. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is add project data. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to upload the LAS file for this data set. Now the LAS is finished uploading, we can go ahead and click save. Now the visualizer is gonna go ahead and start populating now. It'll notify me when it's done. But while it's doing that, we can upload the projections of the LiDAR data set. So for this LiDAR data set that I uploaded, whenever I processed it, now the projection comes from your pre-processing software. So if you're using the DJI L1, it's coming from the DJI Terra software. If you're using the ROC R2A or R1A, it's coming from our PC Master software. And then likewise, if you're using a Phoenix or any other Green Valley systems, it's coming from the pre-processing software itself. So I know this data set was made from the R2A. This is in a WGS. 84 UTM zone 10 north and the vertical per datum is the ellipsoidal height ellipsoid and my final data is going to be in this California state plane California zone six. So it's NAD 83-2011-6426. And I want to be in the NAV D 88 vertical projection. Save. So now once you enter in the projection information of what your data is in when you uploaded it and where you want it to be reprojected to, the Rock Cloud will go ahead and reproject that data and then visualize it for you. The next step is we're going to start uploading our ground control points. Now we can see here we have a number of ground control points. These were given to us by an independent surveyor. We are in NAT83 2011, again in this California 0406 FIPS code, which is the same 6426 EPSG code. This is something you just got to ask your surveyor about. They'll tell you what EPSG code, what state plane you need to be in. And then once you know this, you can go ahead and put that into the reprojection. And then when you're putting this information inside the GCP, you'll put that same EPSG code that this is in currently. So let's go ahead and add a ground control point. We'll click here, add ground control point. Call it the first one. I will grab the easting, put that in for X. Let's grab the north thing. Then for Y, and let's grab the nav D. Okay. And then, yep, there we go. We are in 6426. It's exactly where we want to be. And we know this is a nav D88 already. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the ground control points. 
Now I've finished uploading all the ground control points. You can see them all over here on the map as well. You can click on one, that's 103. Here's 103 right here. So all looking good right now. And we also see that we have the trajectory and the LiDAR data is finished processing. So now we can click on the LiDAR data. It should be in the correct projection with our ground control points on that data set. There we go, looking good. Now at this point, before we go on to generating the contours and the digital train model and the GCP report, the first thing we wanna do is look at our ground control points and the LiDAR data. So we can see here, this looks really good already. Um, not much needs to be done there, but let's see, for example, if we saw the slider data set and we saw the points were there, but it was looking more like this with all of our points below. like this, then we would have to make an adjustment. So now we can see here's our aerial target, but you see the actual point is below the surface. So what you would cut do is come over here and make a Z adjustment to make the points match up with the ladder data set. In this case, it already was perfectly on zero, so I'm just gonna put zero. But what you do is just click this button and adjust until it is appropriately aligned. This is how you're able to make manual interventions to adjust the data set. Likewise, if it was not good in the northing and easting, we can adjust the X and Y as such. And then you click the save button. Once you click the save, it saves the current settings here on your translation of the data set. All right, now that we have uploaded the LiDAR data set, we reprojected it to the correct state plane projection we uploaded the ground control points and their correct projection. We verified that the LiDAR data set looks really good compared to those points. Let's go ahead and click on process. We'll go ahead and select the rock surveyor. And with the rock surveyor app, we're going to get the ground classified LAS, LAZ. We'll get the shape file containing the geometry data. These are the contours. We'll also get a DEM, which is a DTM actually. And this is a digital train model. So this is the bare earth DTM and the DBF attribute format file. This will be the contours, the bare earth digital train model, as well as the ground classified LiDAR data set and our ground control point report. Let's go ahead and order that. So now let's recap exactly what we just did. What we did is we uploaded an LAS file. We then chose the projection that it was in whenever we uploaded it. So this is the projection that the data was in after it came off the drone and was processed by the pre-processing software. This is what the LAS is in. In our case, it was in WS84, a UTM projection in zone 10 north, and it was in an ellipsoidal height. So we knew this because our desktop software told us this that generated the software, and we put that in as the known projection. After this, we reprojected it into our state plane grid with a vertical datum of NAVD88 and California State Plane Zone 6. So now the LiDAR data has been uploaded, it reprojected into the correct projection, and then we uploaded ground control points. We put these XYZ, the northing, the easting, and the elevation in the correct state plane that we were given to them by the surveyor, and then they showed up on the map and they also showed up on the LiDAR data set. We then looked at the LiDAR data set to verify does the ground control points match up with the LiDAR data set. Once this is all verified, we saved, and then we went to the process icon, selected the rock surveyor, and ordered that package. Now we're just gonna sit back and wait, and once the rock survey is done, we're gonna have the contours, we're gonna have the digital train model, we're gonna have the classified LiDAR data set, and we're gonna have our ground control points. So let's sit back and wait for that to get done. All right, so it's all done. So let's go ahead and pop onto the Rock Cloud and see how the results look. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pop over here to the Layers tab, and now we have this Rock Surveyor demo. Click on this, and we have the contours. Let's turn them on high, and let them load. They are looking good. We can say show the ground only. 
Let's see those contours are processing right now. Awesome, this looks great. Again, we can come over here to the eye icon and change the material of the data set. So it's, let's go to elevation. Just makes it easier to see all the different details. RGB gets a little cluttered sometimes. So we can turn on the trees. So we can see here we have a bunch of trees, a bunch of shrubs and brush, and then just the ground. So now we can clearly see all the trees are removed. We can see this, you know, this is a ravine here, greatly classified, really nicely done. And we can see the contours surrounding all the different features and objects. It looks really good. And if we come over here to deliverables, you can see I have all the project data that we uploaded. We have all of the rock surveyor completed outputs over here. And then we have any other deliverables. I actually put these up here as well, just to keep them contained with the data set. This is other stuff that pertains to the project. So there you go. That was the Rock Surveyor app on the Rock Cloud. We use it to upload an aerial LiDAR data mission, as well as some ground control points, and generate a topographic map with contours, digital train model, and ground control point report. We'll see you here next time.